have some ideas of what we want to study and what our variables and confounding variables could be, we have to think about the procedure of our study. And this includes the details of how the study will be conducted. Now, every little detail definitely counts. If we want to think about the procedures, different types of psychological studies could include things like the procedure will be coming to a lab and, and drink a certain substance. It could be measuring a certain reaction time very quick. It could be making sure there's a certain voltage on the computer that's running a cognitive test. It could also be the exact words you say to your participants when you're preparing them for a survey. So every little detail of the procedure absolutely counts. Now, this will hopefully clarify what I was just talking about with the random assignment. When we're thinking about the procedure, there should be some type of comparison with our independent variables and our dependent variables. We wouldn't just test all the cannabis usage and all the, the driving usage. Um, we'd have some sort of comparison in our minds. And so there's two main types of comparisons we tend to consider. And those are the between subjects comparisons and the within subjects comparisons. A between subjects design is when you're looking at two or more groups of participants. So if we want to look at cannabis usage and driving, we would have to have two groups of participants. We'd have to have one group of participants who are driving and they're not under the influence of cannabis and another group of participants who are driving under the influence of cannabis. For the sake of safety, let's say we're using a driving simulator and there's no actual risk of bodily harm or property damage to anybody. So let's assume that we have a group of participants coming to our research lab. They're going to get in a virtual driving simulator and some of them have just been given a dosage of cannabis and some of them have not. Okay. So that would be the between subjects design. Then we would measure on the driving simulator how many collisions they experience. The within subjects design is using two or more time points, but the same group of individuals. Within subjects design can actually use lesser participants uh, than the between subjects design rather than, rather than um, having 100, maybe you only have 25 participants. And what happens is you measure the same people without the influence of cannabis and with the influence of cannabis. So maybe they come into the driving lab and they drive once while they're sober, then they take some cannabis and they drive again. Though you may have noticed some uh, various holes in either one of these studies. Uh, if we're getting people to drive once and then drive again, there may be an opportunity to learn or improve driving skill. So if we're doing it within subjects design, it's important to have ordering effects controlled for. That is, some of your participants will drive first under the influence of cannabis and then they'll sober up and drive again. Whereas other participants in the same study will drive first sober and then be given a dosage of cannabis and then they'll drive again. So that's how we would control an order effect. Of course, in the between subject design, you may say, well, if there's some people coming to the lab and getting a dosage of cannabis and some people are not, that lack of dosage is also changing the procedure. They're not experiencing the same things in the lab. And so one way we could ameliorate that is through giving them a placebo. We'll talk more about placebos later, but let's say we gave everyone a brownie and some people had a brownie that had cannabis in it and some people had a brownie that did not have cannabis in it. So then it makes the procedure more similar for everyone in our between subjects design. Now, sometimes we can get designs that are a lot more complicated than this. For instance, we may experience what's called a factorial design. This is when we take a second independent variable. Now remember, we were talking earlier about day and night driving may be a confounding factor. One of the ways we could statistically control for that is by measuring it and making it a new independent variable. So what we could do here is we could have people drive under the influence and not under the influence in both day and night versions on the driving simulator. In order to have a factorial design, you must always have a minimum of two independent variables. In this case, one independent variable is cannabis usage or not, and the second independent variable is time of day of driving. We still have one dependent variable, and that's driving ability or driving collisions. So you always have a minimum of two independent variables, and you also, in this design, would have a minimum of four groups. Our four groups would include those who are driving under the influence of cannabis during the day, those driving under the influence of cannabis at night, those who are sober during the day, and those who are sober during the night. So this is going to allow for us to statistically control for that uh, previously extraneous variable. Okay, so we have started to consider the comparisons that we make in research designs. And one of the things you may have noticed is that some types of research might be unethical 
if we give people a certain condition that could cause harm. For example, if we ask people to take cannabis and they're not normally cannabis users, that may be very concerning to those research participants. They may not consent to doing that. And so it's important to understand there are many different ways that we can collect psychological data. Some of it through true experiments. A true experiment is when the researchers attempt to control all of the independent variables. That is, they're going to control whether it's night or day on the driving simulator. They're going to control if a person ingests a brownie with cannabis or they don't ingest a brownie with cannabis. Uh, and so they're completely manipulating both IVs. In true experiment, you can assert cause and effect. You can say day and night, uh, driving at night with cannabis caused more accidents on the driving simulator. You can use causal language like that if it's done in a true experiment. However, because this true experiment is done in a lab in a driving simulator, it's not as realistic as it could be. How a person performs in a driving simulator while a researcher is watching them may not actually generalize to how they would drive on the streets using recreational cannabis. And so it has low generalizability. It may not reflect real life. In addition, randomizing and choosing who gets cannabis and who doesn't could consider to be ethically a bit of a problem uh, because you may have people that are not interested in taking cannabis. There could be, especially if you're doing something where somebody has taken opiate or something uh, very powerful, there would definitely be major ethical concerns. Also, sometimes we just cannot manipulate the IV. For example, sometimes we can't control the gender of our participants. Always we can't control the gender of our participants. Uh, we can measure the gender of our participants, but we can't decide which participants are men versus which are women. And so in those situations, we have to look to quasi-experiments. Quasi-experiments are where researchers can manipulate some of the IVs, some of the independent factors, but not all of them. So if you are measuring someone's tolerance to a drug, or you're measuring someone's weight, or you're measuring uh, someone's gender, you're only measuring that. You're not randomly assigning their gender. You can choose to try and get a random number of men and women in your study, but you're not choosing the gender of that participant. So this becomes a quasi-experiment. In quasi-experiments, because there are still some variables that are manipulated, we can assert some types of cause and effect, but it's a bit weaker than true experiments. However, it does improve our generalizability and it does improve our ethical concerns in some situations. Because we're taking more individual differences into account that are beyond our control, it tends to be a little bit more reflective of real life. And because we are not uh, randomly assigning people to have a certain weight, uh, there is less of an ethical problem. And finally, there is what we call a correlational study. A correlational study uh, is when we are not manipulating anything, we are just measuring. So this would be if we're interested uh, in looking at cannabis and car collisions in the real world, we may take police reports and we may look at the number of, of drivers pulled over or arrested for collisions and how many were using cannabis and, and what, what the dosage was, let's say. Or we might want to measure how drinking sugary soft drinks may influence one's uh, mental health and we may just measure that. We may get people to fill out diet records and measure what they've been eating in terms of nutrition and then also uh, get them to fill out some surveys about their mental health. And we're not manipulating or controlling anything. People are choosing for themselves what they eat or drink uh, and what the outcome is, is not in our control. So this is not a true manipulation. Because of that, it's ethically a lot better. Uh, it's, it's less uh, risk. It's just participants doing what they would normally do without the study. So it's considered a lot sounder. It is a lot more generalizable. We're actually just measuring real world effects. So the generalizability is high, as long as our people participating are somewhat representative of our population. However, with correlation studies, because there's no manipulation of any independent variables, we cannot assert cause and effect. Correlation does not mean causation. Therefore, if you're just measuring, you can't say the sugary soft drinks cause mental health issues. You cannot say that. You would have to say they predict uh, or they're linked with. You can't say cause. So it gets a little bit tricky in how we would word it.